Hi, I'm Molly. And I'm Jamie, and this is our From the Pasture with Hired Hand podcast. As the owners of Hired Hand website software, we've been developing websites and creating internet marketing strategies for livestock breeders for the past 10 years. The majority of our customers are involved in the breeding of registered animals, such as Texas longhorn, Highland cattle, horses, and white-tailed deer, where the pedigrees are very important. The From the Pasture with Hired Hand podcast examines many of the differences in raising pedigreed livestock for maximum profit. Join us and learn what we're covering today. Joining me for today's podcast are Kale and Tiffany Heyer with Higher Land and Cattle in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Thank you both for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having us. Why don't we jump into things and you all just start by telling me a little bit about yourselves and how you got started in Longhorns. Sure. So um, my name is Kale Heyer. My wife sitting over here to the side of me, it's Tiffany. Um, I grew up out in Guymon, Oklahoma, which is out there in the Panhandle. Um, Tiff grew up over in the Fairview area. She graduated from Fairview High School. Um, I moved to Stillwater in 07 to go to school at Oklahoma State, graduated and then started a business in Stillwater and just stayed. Um, met my wife in 2018. Yep, got got that right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in, in 2019. Um, and we're home builders here in the, in the Stillwater area. In 2020, we, uh, we bought our place that we have now. Um, and this is where we raise our longhorns. Uh, we've got 80 acres here just southwest of Stillwater. We live on the ranch and um, that's what we do. Um, we both grew up on, on farms out in Western Oklahoma. And so our goal was always to get back into the country. And so um, when we had the chance, found this place and um, been raising longhorns since 2020 out here. So how did you first get started with them? Did you, did you find some locally? Did you know what you were getting into? Kind of walk me through that journey. Sure. So no, had absolutely no idea what I was getting into. So before I had met my wife, um, I think it was probably in 2015, 2016, somewhere in there, I had bought 15 or 20 acres there south of Stillwater. And my goal was to build a house there. And then a developer came in. This is before I was a home builder. So a developer came in and decided to build all these houses around my pretty little 15 or 20 acres. So I decided I needed to do something with it. Um, I hate it for a couple of years and that was okay, but I wanted to do something with it. And a friend of mine through the construction industry, his dad raised longhorns. And so my first thought was maybe I'll do some commercial cows. And, um, I didn't have any fences at the time out there. Um, all I had was a pond Didn't have running water, didn't have a well. And so a lot of people were said, man, maybe commercial is not really the, you know, black cows is probably not the route you need to go. I had a friend who had some Herefords, kicked that around for a while. And then someone suggested, you know, Longhorns are pretty easy keepers. You don't have to do a whole lot. They're very hardy, very docile for the most part. Maybe you get a couple Longhorns. Well, my buddy's dad had some. And so uh, Taylor Ranch, I ran down there and um, looked at some of his cows, picked out, uh, walked out there with him. And actually, Ryan was with me at the time. And we walked out there and I was able to walk up to two of them and pet them. Didn't know anything about longhorns. And so when um, when I was able to go out there and pet them, that was kind of sold. So picked out two. Turned out they had come off the uh, show circuit. So they had been shown. I think um, Nail Tam Longhorns had been showing them. So um, Nelson and, and Tammy had been showing them. Mm -hmm. So they were super friendly. Um they were red and white, which was always the colors I liked, picked out those two. And then he was kind enough to lend me a young, um, I think he was an RR sweet brindle dust son, real pretty dark red, little, probably 18 month old bull lend me him. And we were kind of off and running. So, um, had about 15 or 20 acres and <laughs> to keep these cows in, I had, um, two strand hot wire and it worked. <laughs> I could keep them in with two strands of hot wire. Now I couldn't always keep the calves in. Um, but once I got them out there, super docile, the, the neighbors all wanted to come and visit them. I'd be at work and I'd get pictures or videos of them out in the pasture with my cows. And at that point I was kind of hook line, hook line sinker. I was, I, I was all in. So 
jumped in trying to learn bloodlines like everybody else does. Um, I will tell you, one of those cows I picked out, just luckily, was Playmate. We still have her. She's a 90-inch triple twist cow. Like, we just got so lucky. That's, um, that's very lucky. I feel yes. like that doesn't always happen. <laughs> no, no. Just and, and he'll tell you to this day, he's like, you got me on her. She was only <laughs> probably two years old at the time. She had only had one calf. The calf had been weaned. So she was just a real high horn cow. Um, starting to hook a little bit, but you would have never guessed that she was going to go ahead and, and uh, twist like she did. Um, so that was our first cows. That's how we got started. And once I was able to see how easy keeper they were and, and just how much enjoyment you could get out of them, um, we, we were all in at that point. So what did you think about all this, Tiffany? <laughs> I will Here, be very honest. We raised cattle growing up, my dad, my brother, and I swore that I would never marry someone that had anything to do with cattle. I wanted <laughs> nothing to do with it. And whenever we first started dating, he had two. So it's like, okay, I can handle that. And here we are today. And they're great. They make him happy. I love it. I enjoy going out to the pastures and taking our son out there. And it's just it's changed my mind and never say never. <laughs> well, you say here we are today. How many head do you all have now? <laughs> so if you ask her too many, um, <laughs> I think we have, I think we got 16 mama cows out there right now. Um, I think we've got seven breeding age heifers and probably five or six wean eight, weaning age heifers, probably something like that, yeah. which is about perfect. Tiff would probably like that to be about five head shorter. We count cows differently <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Whenever he counts one, it's a mama and her calf yeah. where I'm like, that's two. It doesn't matter. No, that's age. a pair. That's one. Right. <laughs> um, I mean, I think I might have to side with Tiffany on this one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I can take that one step further. This is actually really funny. So her family farms and ranches, my family farms, um, my great grand, my actually, be my great my great grandfather started farming out there in Gaiman. My grandfather farmed in Gaiman. My dad farms in Gaiman, and my younger brother farms in Gaiman. So I'm the only one that doesn't. But you can call, you could pick up the phone today and, and call any of. If my grandfather was still around, you could call him on the phone. They despise cattle. They want <laughs> nothing to do with cattle. They are. They will tell you we are farmers. We are not ranchers. And so I had oddly enough, I had no experience with with cattle at all. The the extent of my um, cattle experience was as a kid building hot wire fence because my dad would lease his wheat over the winter months to, to, to ranchers. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I knew nothing. And then, <laughs> and so to this day, I can call my dad and he, he does not care <laughs> at all about our long, about our no, long horse, does he? No. <laughs> Well, let, let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about how you kind of had to educate yourself on all of this. Um, first question I'm curious about, do you still just have the two wire hot wire fence or did you have to improve that a little bit? <laughs> so, yeah, great question. So um, in we sold that property in 2019 and 2020. 2020. Yeah. So then we moved to our new place in 2020. So the place we have now um, was uh, built in 1979. It is an old horse ranch. Um, we were told at some point this guy had almost a hundred horses out here. Wow. So it had, had established fences. We've just spent the last few years rebuilding them. So we do have a lot better fences now. Um, horses but, versus cattle on fence. It's yeah. A very you can, different thing. Yeah. It was three wire, smooth wire. And um, with longhorns that that's literally nothing. Um, they could go right under everything. So we've spent a lot of time uh, rebuilding fences and, any good rancher will tell you as soon as you get done building fences, you, you start over. And so it's a, it's a never ending, project. never ending project. Yeah. Yeah. Rebuilding fences. Um, that's yeah. Still building fences. Always will be building fences. I think yeah. part of it. Yeah. What else did you have to teach yourself to, you know, be a, be a rancher and not a farmer? I yeah. Uh, well, I didn't know it. Okay. So I'm going to tell a horrible story <laughs> for myself. Um, so had uh, after we got our first two, um, I went back and bought two sit and bull, black and white sit and bull daughters. Wanted to try to get some color into the herd, um, and they were they had just been weaned. They were probably oh seven eight months old, and um, I would go out every single evening and feed them by hand. And 
one day I had a bucket of feed and I put them, put the feed in there and there were teeth in the bucket of feed. And I thought I was doing something awful. Come to find out they were just losing their milk teeth. So that explains to you how much I had no idea. <laughs> so oddly enough, uh, Ryan was a big help. I could, he could answer some questions for me. Um, I had farmers and ranchers around me. I could always ask them questions. Um, oddly enough, though, a lot of things that commercial guys do, Longhorn guys do not do. Um, they just they do things in such large quantities. It doesn't really apply to us. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> jumping on uh, the Facebook, the Longhorn Facebook pages, you could search about anything. And someone had asked the question prior to me. Believe it or not, that was a huge help for health. Um, anything from deworming to fly control to good feeds, um, types of hay, anything and everything. You can literally search it on Facebook, on one of those Longhorn uh, Facebook pages. And mm -hmm. You're going to have someone who's asked that question prior. And boy, do people give their opinions. <laughs> it, it makes it, it does, it makes it pretty easy. Um, then, you know, if you, if you move from that and you go into, hey, I need to learn pedigrees and bloodlines and progeny, that's, that was just trial and error at first. Um, it took two or three years to realize, you know, what I like, not everybody else likes. And that's not necessarily what sells at the, at the sales, not going to bring top dollar. And so you kind of need to learn, balance yourself between what I like and what I like to look at versus, hey, you know, one day I could take that cow or that heifer to a sale and, and, and get, you know, hopefully a, a good price for her. Mm -hmm. um, that was something that took a couple of years to learn that I've got some cows out there that they're mine and they're not going anywhere. And I don't really care if anyone likes them or not. They're mine. Um, but I've also got cows out there that are specifically for, hey, if I can cross her with this bull or this bloodline, get some offspring. I know that, you know, take her to the horn showcase at the legacy or, or the legend sale, one of the big sales, and you know you, you could potentially get top dollar for them. Do you feel like you have anyone in the industry that you kind of look at as a mentor, or they kind of took you under their wing regarding yeah. the pedigree part specifically? One hundred percent. That I'm so glad you asked that because it gives me the opportunity <laughs> to talk about the Heralds. So, um, 2020, we move out to our new place that fall, then October of 2020. Um, we had, well, that was kind of when Rebel was really blowing up. Um, he, the Heralds own him still. Uh, they hadn't done have any partners on him. Um, you couldn't buy in on the, on the straws yet. He, they, like the Heralds had him. And so I, I was doing some research and I just kind of fell in love with Rebel, like a lot of people. Um, and so I was online doing some research, looking on Facebook came across a post by Brian Brett. He, if I remember correctly, I think he had done some embryo work and ended up with a rebel heifer out of one of his, um, one of his daughters. And so I reached out to Brian and I said, Hey, long shot, would you have any interest in selling, you know, that embryo? And he kindly said, absolutely not. <laughs> Way too much time and effort into this embryo. And no, however, why don't you just reach out to the Heralds? You know, they'd be more than happy to, to talk with you. I knew the name, I knew what HR stood for, but I had no, had never had any contact with them. Um, Rebel kind of read, led me to Rowdy because Rowdy was still really popular. And I knew that, you know, at one point the Herald's owned Rowdy as well. Mm -hmm. Got in touch with Dale Hunt. Dale was super helpful, talked with me and he pushed me towards uh, the Herald's. He goes, you, if you want Rebel, holler at Kent. So um, I, in the middle of all that, um, reached out to them. Justin Rombeck called me. He said, they've got some Longhorn, uh, they've got some Rebel uh, bull calves and heifers in the weaning pen right now. You just need to call Kent yourself and go out there and look. So Justin sent me Kent's number. I called Kent. He called me back and we were um, blown away. They, uh, they said, get your butt out here right now. Uh, we'll set a time. We'll spend a couple hours with you. We'll take you through the entire uh, the entire ranch will show you every single cow we've got. We've got Rebel here if you want to go see him, and then we'll finish um, with at the uh, at the weaning pen. Pick out what you want. We'll we'll come to a, an agreement. They didn't know us from Adam, <laughs> and so at this time we had what maybe 10, 12 mama cows. Yeah, yeah. Um, and here I am on the phone with Kent Harrell. 
So uh, we set a time and we went out there and they spent, what would you say, five hours with us all know. morning. It was it was a long time. They spent all morning with us, didn't know who we were. They just knew that we wanted to come see some of the Rebels offspring. Put us in the side by side, drove us the entire ranch. Um, Rebel at the time was on R&R. He was resting. He was in October, so he wasn't breeding. They had put him in a back pasture by himself. So he drove us all. I mean, I don't know how many gates we went through, <laughs> 10 gates to get to him. Ken didn't care. He just wanted to show off Rebel. So yeah. we went back there. I'm in the front seat with Kent, and I'm like a sponge. Like, I'm asking probably the silliest questions ever, but I'm trying to absorb every little piece of information I can. And, and he is, I mean, he's telling me everything he knows. Tiff and Sandy are in the back. Little did we know, they were out there wheeling and dealing the whole time. We <laughs> had no idea. So, yeah, I don't know if you've been to the ranch or if, if people listening have been to the ranch, but you drive down the road and you have to go past their barn, past their, their weaning pens to get into the main pasture. And so when we went through there, there was a black cow laying on the ground. And Kent said, you know, she's probably in labor. And he had a ranch hand at the time. And he called him and said, you probably ought to go check on her. Uh, she, you know, she's down. She's probably got, she's probably in labor. And then we did our tour, you know, three, three hours, four hours later, we come, you have to circle back up there. And um, when we did to the weaning pen, well, she was up. And so clearly she had had her calf. And so we went over to the weaning pen and, and I said, Hey, Tiff, you want to walk through there with me? And uh, Sandy said, no, we're good. And I said, <laughs> what? And she goes, yeah, we're, we, we've got a deal struck. We're good. And I said, okay, well, uh, you guys want to tell me what we're doing? <laughs> and so apparently, well, me and Kent were um, blowing smoke in the, in the front seats there. Uh, Tiff and Sandy were in the back seats wheeling and dealing over that black cow. They'd already, they are, go ahead. No, she was beautiful. It was just her face. Yeah. Just, uh, so it's HR Flamenco. She's a big red uh, daughter, solid black. She's got a white face. Um, I guess we could ask Joe if she's true black or not. I don't know. But um, the funny thing was, is they came to, a, came to an agreement on a price and we didn't know if it was a bull calf or a heifer. <laughs> it was just, that was part of the deal. And so I said, so are we getting a, a bull calf or are we getting a heifer? And so uh, Kent called his, his uh, ranch hand and he went out there and it was a little bull calf. And so that was part of the deal was we got her and the bull calf and a day or two later, um, Kent brought her out to us. So that was the beginning of our relationship with the Heralds. And I'm going to tell you, they have been instrumental in everything since. Um, and I will tell you to this day, that calf, that little bull calf is the most beautiful bull we have on this property. <laughs> yeah, he is. Um, as far as color is concerned, he looks exactly like Rebel. I mean, exactly. The only problem is, is he's got about 72 inches of horn. <laughs> so, uh, but we do still have HR Flamenco also. We still have her and she does. She will give you the prettiest calves every time. Every, I think we have two or three of her sons. We've got two of her daughters. Mm -hmm. She, she's just a producing calf. Um, but since that time, um, we've been down to the Harrells a handful more times, bought some more cows, but they have been instrumental in helping us, um, learn and, and, um, those going back to your original question, the, the pedigrees and the bloodlines, they had it figured out with how they, they intertwined, um, rebel and rowdy, then putting rowdy on rebel daughters with triple O Rosemary. And I mean, JR grand slam, like they had that figured out. And, um, that is kind of what we've tried to, to reproduce here is intertwining those bloodlines on, on, you know, our bull that we own is Rocket Man 10. That's a PCC um, Rimrock Sun. He's 91 inches, give or take now, um, with some of the most lateral horn you have you have ever seen. You know, he's 91 inches. He's probably got uh, 94, 95 total. Like, he's just straight as an arrow. And we wanted to incorporate that on some of the Harold's cows and um, kind of how they have intertwined Rebel and Rowdy. We've tried to intertwine, you know, cross rebel and rocket man and and then now we've got a uh, partnership bull with Corey davenport of 11 ranch and kent and sandy harrell um stimulus hr who's a rebel rebel son he's mm -hmm. he was over 80 at three i don't know if he'll hit 90 at four he's going to be oh he'll probably finish about 87 88 inches you know by eight or nine he might be 90 but a uh, lot of lateral horn also um 
we, so what we're doing is we're cross, we're doing what they've done. And, and to be fair, Brian Brett did too. I remember years ago, Brian Brett um, did a podcast with you guys and he talked about how he was able to, to cross exactly what we're doing. You know, getting, getting daughters out of one bull and then um, putting another bull on them and then crossing back. And that's what the mm-hmm. Herald's done. And that's what we're trying to do. And it works. <laughs> and so that's the, the, the Herald's have been instrumental in that for sure. And then Brian probably doesn't know it, but Brian Brett's podcast was extremely helpful, probably to other people too. But um, that's kind of what we based based all that on. So I guess one question I have for follow up from that story is: Does Tiffany still get to do all of your negotiating for you? <laughs> well, so she's probably better at it than I am. I have a hard time <laughs> saying no. So she she is probably way better of a negotiator. Than I am. Yeah, I try to keep him level headed. He yeah. sees a cow, he gets excited. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I have a weak spot. She'll tell you, I have a weak spot for. Uh, Red, cows. red, <laughs> solid red, twisty cows. Uh, and I think we could probably get Justin on the line. I think that guy knows that. And so <laughs> he, he is very good about putting some twisty horn red cows from the Heralds in most sales. And he knows that he's going <laughs> to at least keep an eye on them. Um, but that, you know, the reason I like, I like red cows is we have, we have rocket man. He, he's a Parker Brown. He's got a black head. Uh, you know, you could probably call him blue roan. Probably he probably isn't blue roan, but he does sure look like it. You put that on a solid red cow and all of a sudden, boom, you got color, color galore. So it sure is nice. And you know, people will tell you this. I can get a little bit of a discount on a cow because she's red. People want color. But if I can get a solid red, you know, almost 90 or 90 inch cow, put her on Rocket Man who's over 90, and guess what? I've got 290 plus and I'm gonna get color out of them every single time. So it's worked really, really well for us. Looking for top quality Longhorns and a taste of true Texas spirit? Look no further than Cantera Cattle Company. Our passion for Longhorns shines at Old Gringo Ranch, where tradition meets excellence. Visit us online at CanteraCattleCompany.com and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok for the latest updates and ranch life fun. Ready to experience it yourself? Schedule your visit by emailing CanteraCattle at gmail.com. Remember, God is great, Longhorns are good, and life is crazy. Hey, if you love From the Pasture with Hired Hand, why not go check out my podcast, The Big Iron Podcast with Andrew Shigori, where we dive into the world of registered Texas Longhorns and what it means to be an agriculture entrepreneur in the modern world, with a little Southern flair, of course. Find The Big Iron Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Love what you're hearing? Be sure to check out our pickup truck confessions. It's a video series where we hop in the truck or rental car and interview a variety of breeders about what drives their passion for their livestock, how they got started in the breed of their choice, marketing tips, and more. And now back to the podcast. So going back to the comment that you mentioned previous, I think it's what got us got us on this topic um, about using Facebook and the group as a resource for kind of like the health issues and stuff. Are there any um, are there any folks you've met through that group specifically that you kind of now go to for advice or that have helped you with that side of things? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. So, well, I would say here, maybe not so much on the health, but <clears throat> um, two years ago, I guess it'd be 2023, we had a lot of bull calves. Um, and so, and Rocket Man putting size on them, we said, hey, these aren't really just coal animals, you know, these bull calves, we could probably beef them. And so uh, Garrett Sullivan, uh, GTS, is that right? GTS mm-hmm. Ranch, yeah. he does beef. And I think he did a podcast with you about beef. Mm-hmm. He's been extremely helpful in, in getting us kind of situated to do to, to Longhorn, a uh, beef Longhorn. And then, um, gosh, who are some other people that have just been so helpful through, well, Miranda Webb, you got I mean, she's spectacular. <laughs> Everybody probably knows the horrible, awful story that I lost all my Facebook stuff, everything got hacked, lost everything. And so we were able, Miranda was kind enough to let us say, Hey, I'm, it is me. I'm starting over trying to get all my, my friends back. Miranda was super helpful. Um, really, you know, I would say that anybody on there, it, you, you really never know. Um, you, you post a question, you post a picture and you've got the same people that are always going to, you know, congratulate you or, or tell you how much, how pretty your cow is or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, 
there's always other people too that you don't know and they like something on there and you can strike up a conversation. I love going, Tiff will tell you this too. We love going to the sales and meeting people in real life that you don't ever get the chance to actually meet because mm-hmm. you've had interactions on social media of some sort mm-hmm. and you get to meet them and, and it's, it's, it's pretty neat. Let's talk about that a little bit. So how far into your journey did you, did you realize that you needed to or enjoyed going to sales and fraturities and the measurement competitions and stuff? Yeah, maybe Tiff can help me get my, my dates right. So I think the first horn showcase, the first big sale I went to was the horn showcase. And it was probably in the fall of 2020. Well, I would say 2021. Maybe 2021. Okay. So like, I think it was in November of that year. 2021 and i think it was in fort worth um that was the first time i got to meet dean that's i should mention dean he's had social media Dean's so helpful um got to meet dean uh knew the heralds at that point um so they introduced me to dean um yeah the horn showcase 2021 was kind of when i realized hey you, you can put names to faces and actually meet these people um super helpful um in 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 getting to know know people and meet people and things like that. Do you have an event that you haven't gotten to attend yet? That's kind of on your wish list that you, you all want to make it to. I've never made it out East, like the cherry blossom sale, something like that. I'd love to go out, out East sometime. Um, never been able to go see the G and G branch. Love to go out there and see that. Um, but I mean, we're, we are super lucky. They've moved. The, the legend sale was just down in what town was that in? We just went there a couple weeks ago. Anyway, um, um, went down there and then, uh, now horn showcase being in El Reno from where we are, that's, that's you know, that made it easy to be able an to hour, over there. an hour down the road. So mm-hmm. we've been so thankful. Tiff gets to go with me now to, to go down there and, and do that. So, so looking back on how you got started and, you know, seemingly, your uncomfortableness maybe with how little you felt you knew about, you know, raising cattle and longhorns specifically. Is there any advice that you wish someone would have given you back then that you could share today for folks maybe in similar situations? Yeah. um, The thing I learned, well, let me preface this by saying when I was just getting started, I think it was 2017. um, I was young really, I couldn't go out and buy a big, powerful bull. Like, you you just couldn't do that. So the, the, and I didn't have the facility to do any type of AI. You know, we had two wire, hot wire fence, like we previously mentioned. So my only way to get bulls was partnerships. And there was lots of people who were more than willing to partner with you. And one of them, the very first ones that I partnered on was HL Lincoln, a beautiful bull, um, great bloodlines. And so I wasn't able to really nail down my bloodlines from the very beginning. I kind of had to take what I could afford and what was available in these partnership bulls. Um, and so at the very beginning, I was kind of all over the place with my, my bloodlines. Um, kind of turned out to be a blessing in disguise because I kind of learned what worked and what didn't. Everybody out there can tell you who knows what they're doing. Certain bloodlines really work and you can get lucky. But there's some that, hey, they just, they just work. So in the very beginning, I wish somebody had just sat down with me and said, X, Y, and Z typically work really well. A, B, and C don't. Sometimes they do, but more than likely, you know, that's not going to be it. If I could give that advice to somebody today wanting to get started, I'd say the exact same thing. I would say A, B, and C, they work, but they're not going to be, you know, they're not going to jump off the page at you where, If you were to cross X, Y, and Z over here, hey, you got a shot. You know, that's really popular right now. That's bringing top dollar at the sales, that that sort of thing. Um, Oh, gosh, I don't know. I was probably two or three years in. Um, We bought a a Cowboy Tough Checks son, S.W. Halen. And so at that point, we had crossed with with, um, H.L. Lincoln. We had crossed J.P. Rio Grande. And then, then we had crossed the, the tough lines on our cows. And I was heavily um, Hunt's Command Respect. I had lots of Hunt's Command Respect uh, granddaughters and great-granddaughters. And I was playing with, you know, what worked and what didn't. And that takes years. <laughs> it takes forever 
to realize what works and what doesn't work. You buy a mama cow, you cross her on this bull. Maybe she's bred, maybe she's not. So then you got to wait till she's open, breed her to your bull. Um, when that calf is born, you know, maybe you can make a decision on that calf at 12 months. Maybe it takes 18 months. Um, did it work? It didn't work. You know, here I am two years in just seeing what works. If you had someone who could tell you, hey, I've done this in the past and it works, you just saved yourself a lot of time and a lot of money. So you've mentioned a few that you feel like you got kind of lucky with early on. Are there any that you cold and regret it or, you know, let slip through your fingers and down the road, you know, they turned out to be something while you were kind of learning those lessons? Any instances like that? No. And you mentioned that the story of uh, Dylan. I don't know if you know that story where he had to buy him back. So <laughs> Let's he, hear it. I, I, so I, I don't own Dylan. Um, we owned a Dylan son at one point. And so that's where I heard the story from. Um, so Dylan was cold and uh, sold as a roper and with a big group. And then um, when they were working them, I think they were probably going to band them or cut them. And uh, the guy that had bought him his roper said, hey, did you accidentally <laughs> sell me this this bull calf and the guys, I, I, I'm, I'm bad with names. I don't even remember who owned Dylan originally, but he said, what do you mean? He goes, you need to, you need to get down here and look at this bull. So he gets, and anyway, I think he ended up paying like twice what he, what he got for <laughs> to get him back. But no, no stories like that for us. Uh, Tiff will tell you I'm slow to sell. I was going to say he holds on to I him. hold on to him. I give him every opportunity I can. We have, we have cold. Um, well, and, and, you know, one of the things that, people are talking about right now is the coal, coal cows are, are bringing really good money right now. So it does make that right now with the way the market has been over the last couple of years and the way it's trending, it makes coaling way easier when you can load them up and, and take them to a local sale barn and get decent mm -hmm. money for them. We're not paying, you mm -hmm. know, or not, they're not paying pennies on the dollar. You're getting a pretty decent price. And even, even, um, you know, I, I noticed the other day, somebody was asking about on, on one of the social media pages was saying something about bringing, uh, Took, took some mama cows to, to sale and brought really good money. And I think Josh Dinwiddie was like, hey, this is the time to cut the bottom of your herd right now. If you've got some that you've been thinking about culling and you're just having a hard, do it. Now is the time to do it. And so that has made things a lot easier. Um, I would say not none have really slipped past us for the most part. Um, but I'm sure that will happen in due time at some point. <laughs> Hopefully not, though. Hopefully yeah, not. yeah. Um, <laughs> So I, I will tell you, though, we got um, a couple years ago, we bought a cow from the Harrell's um, Texana peach pie. And Texana had a rebel daughter at side. And um, Texana had, oh, she was probably 82, 83 inches of horn tip to tip, but she was over 100 total. And we had Rocket Man. And when we bought Rock, and I need to tell that story at some point, but when we bought Rocket Man, um, D Beers was the one that called me and he said, I hope you have a huge herd. I'm like, no, we really, really don't. He goes, well, at least I hope you have some Hunts Command Respect um, bloodlines. And I said, that's all I got. He goes, well, Rocket Man's going to lay down those Hunts Command Respect high horn cows. And so when the Heralds put um, Texana Peach Pie in a sale, she had a ton of total horn. And she had a rebel daughter at side. And so we nabbed her up. And I'm going to tell you, that is the center of our herd right now. Um, that that rebel daughter, which we named Slice of Rebel Pie, um, is she's an 80-inch three-year-old. She's going to be close to 90 inches at four. And we just had our first um, Rocket Man daughter out of Slice of Rebel Pie. And she's it. Like, that's it. Um, Justin has already called me and said, Hey, we need to get that pair in the sale. And I'm saying, no, sir, it ain't <laughs> happening. Um, so I would say that got really lucky, you know, in the very beginning, we talked about getting playmate 90 inch triple twist cow got really lucky. Mm -hmm. We got so lucky on, um, Texana peach pie. That is, that is the ticket. Let's hear your story about how you, uh, acquired rocket man since you mentioned it. <laughs> Uh, we got so lucky with him. Um, it would have been the winter of 2020, so we hadn't been in our place very long. We had eaten supper. I was sitting. I, I was sitting in the living room, and uh, was just scrolling through Facebook, just seeing what people had posted, what was for sale, that sort of thing. 
And um, Titan Pace had posted a picture of Rocket Man 10 and said, this bull is for sale. D is retiring. And um, I immediately messaged him and said, no, ask him price. He shot me the price. And within a minute or two of him posting that, we had him bought. Like it, was, awesome. it was a no-brainer. Um, I got lucky because he was a PCC Rimrock. I had no PCC Rimrock. I had some JP Rio, but I didn't have any PCC Rimrock in my herd. And my, I thought, hey, let's try this. Um, the next day, I mean, you want to talk about the stars aligning. The next day, D calls me. He says, congratulations, we're going to get her down to you. At that point, um, Doug Hunt was kind of retiring and dispersing some of his herd. And um, they had a trailer coming from up there, um, up by Utah, down mm -hmm. to, I think, Texas at the time. He's like, we can have him there in like less than a week. I said, let's do it. And that's when he said, hey, um, do you have a bunch of Hunt's command respect? And I said, I do. And he said, you hit the jackpot, man. It works. It's, it's going to take a bunch of high horn cows. It's going to lay it down. And you and I both know you can go to a sale and – Tip to tip wins, right? Color and tip to tip win. But I can get a, a red high horn cow a little bit of a discount. And here I got a bull who's just going to fix it. And so it has worked. Um, then with him telling me that Hunt's Command Respect works on, on Rocket Man in the middle of Rebel blowing up. Well, guess what? Guess who, guess who Rebel's daddy is? It's WF Commando. And guess who WF Commando's daddy is? Hunt's Command Respect. So I said, hey, this is this is going to work. Let's let's try to get some rebel on on Rocket Man. And it has taken three or four <laughs> years to do it. But we have done it. And we've got a heifer out there right now that I'm telling you, she, she's the real deal. We've gotten we've been back to the Heralds. We've got some more rebel daughters since. And um, that's going to be the the center uh, of what we're going to try to do. And then that's where stimulus HR comes in is. Um, Rocket Man daughters that don't have any rebel, we're going to cross on, on a on stimulus. Going back to what the Heralds have done, what Ryan Brett has done, and and that's it's it's taken some time, <laughs> but uh, we're getting there and it's working. Is it hard to be patient? <sighs> yes, because you need more pastures. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you need more hay. Um, it's I'm getting better at it. You know, one thing talking with other people is, you know, we're not we're not a big name. We're we've got, you know, 15 or 20 mama cows out there and, and 80 acres. And so um, I am not big enough for one of my bull calves to make a name or make a wave in the industry. I just I'm just not. It's just kind of the way it is. So calling bull calves is super easy. You know, that, that that's that simple unless there's something spectacular. Hey, they're they're 40 inches at, at a year with good size and good color. So the cooling of the bull calves has become easier, especially with tail barn prices the way they are. Heifers are tough. <laughs> I like to sit on heifers. Um, I would say no matter what, I'm going to sit on the heifer until she's a year old just to give them a chance. Um, and then more than likely, uh, if they're still not doing anything at, at 12 months, I'll call them. I learned this from Kent. Uh, he said, cool your bull calves really hard. Give your heifers a little time. Uh, he said he calls three times. He'll call at weaning, he'll call at a year, and he'll call at 18 months. And that's what I do. I learned that from Kent. That's exactly what I do. If, if I keep them in 18 months, I'm going to breed them to something. We're going to see what happens. From the Pasture by Hired Hand is presented by R3 Hilltop Ranch. Located in Chilton, Texas, R3 Hilltop Ranch has been breeding registered Texas Longhorns since 2006. What began as three heifers has grown into our current herd, which you can explore on our website at r3hilltop.com. We're passionate about loud colors, longhorns, and docile temperaments, but it's the easy-keeping, low-maintenance traits of Texas Longhorns that initially attracted us and continue to drive our herd growth. In addition to livestock, we proudly offer certified Longhorn beef products. Visit r3hilltop.com forward slash beef to learn more. Thank you for listening and enjoy exploring our ranch online at r3hilltop.com. Hidden Springs Ranch, located in central North Carolina, is committed to registered Texas Longhorns. From our high-end breeding stock 
down to our delicious Longhorn beef sticks. Check us out at hslonghorns.com or on Instagram at Hidden Springs Ranch. Hidden Springs Ranch, where they're bred to turn heads. Do you sometimes feel like you're the only one who doesn't have it all figured out? Rural life can be isolating, but it doesn't have to be. Welcome to Ag's Most Okayest Farm Girls, the podcast for women who are craving connection, laughter, solidarity, camaraderie, and just overall encouragement in your everyday life and dreams. Each week, your hosts, Annalise, that's me, and Courtney will cover topics such as farm life, mom life, making money online, side hustles, hobbies, sharing on social media, jobs off the farm, and so much more. Us rural gals need to stick together, so saddle up for some fun, real, and unsolicited advice and and stories from our everyday farm lives. Grab a drink. We're Egg's Most Okayest Farm Girls, and we're here to help. Listen wherever you find podcasts. Well, let's switch gears a little bit. Um, let's go back again to when you were first getting started and, you know, had the smaller pasture and maybe not the best fence and stuff. If you if you had to pick three pieces of equipment that you have today um, or structures or, you know, let's just group all that together that you feel is like, okay, you know, I, I should have known this sooner or I wished I had this sooner. This makes a difference with my herd yeah. size. What what would they be? So some sort of everybody will tell you this, some sort of shoot. Um whether whether it's um Joe's shoot or uh PNC, some some sort of, of shoot with a set of working pins. You gotta invest in it, you gotta do it. Um spend the money. It's so much safer. Gotta get that. That's number one. Number two. Uh, get you a trailer, even if it's just a set, like, you know, seven foot wide rust bucket of some sort, get you a trailer. Cause at some point you're going to have a, a calf that gets sick and you're not going to be able to doctor it. You're going to need to take, you know, we are so lucky. We're right down the road from Oklahoma state, you know, awesome, large animal vet. And so, so many times if something were to happen, um, um, lame foot or get a calf that's sick and, LA 200 or whatever doesn't, doesn't bring, you know, isn't helping. We can load them up, take them to OSU large animal vet. So get a trailer. doesn't need to be fancy. Um, just some way to move cows back and forth in case one gets injured or, or, or is sick. Um, and then I would say um, probably skid steer tractor. Skid steer something. tractor. Yeah. <laughs> something. Hey, get your hay out. Right. You need, you need some forks. Um, we use our skid steer for absolutely everything. That's, essential get you even just get your tractor get you some hay forks get you get, you started with a little trailer i, I did so i started with i started with a trailer that you hook on the back of your pickup that has a hand winch forks like that is how i put hay out. and you want to talk about taking forever to move that is how when we hayed i had to move my hay like that one bale at a time and so i would say even that like right getting started have a hay trailer of some sort, be able to move hay from point A to point B because you're going to have to have it. That would be my three pieces of equipment that you've got to have. What about one that you don't have that you, that is kind of on your wish list or, or your someday, your someday item that you'll have? Sprayer, a sprayer. I would have said tractor. No, because <laughs> you know, with, with what we've got, tractor would be handy, but I want a sprayer. I guess you could even do a, a three point sprayer. Yeah. So Tiff's probably right. That way you could even for fin, yeah. building fins, all, yeah. all of it. Yeah. Well, I feel like we've talked a lot about different bloodlines and kind of your your view of what works for consignment sales and measurement competitions in the industry and stuff. But is there anything about your future goals or your future plans that I haven't asked you that you want to share? Um, <clears throat> no, I think you really, you asked the right question and I kind of hit on it was, our, our goal right now, and, and like we had mentioned previously, it takes time. Our goal over the next couple of years is to continue to really cross um, Rocket Man on the Rebel Bloodlines. That is that is our goal now and in the future. Um, it, it, you know, over, uh, get really, it's only been a few months ago that we had that finally happen. And we plan on continuing to try to do that. That would be our biggest, I think our biggest goal. Yeah. I'd like to ask you guys some rapid fire questions now. So whoever, let's let Tiffany go first and you can go. All right. Else, I'm so. it over here. All right. So <laughs> favorite farm snack. Favorite farm snack. Yep. What's your favorite snack to have out in the pasture when you're just, you know, enjoying the cattle. 
cake. Not, are you eating them or are the cows eating them? The cows. Okay. That's what she said out in the pasture. Okay. okay. <laughs> That's the best way I can pet. We love on our cows. We get to scrub on them, brush some of them, and so cubes. You just make some be grass puppies. <laughs> <laughs> Is your answer any different, Kale? So I interpreted that different. I, I, it, I it, 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 meant for us. So okay. one of us it, can, it can go silly. either way. Okay. Really. Well, one of us is looking silly right now. So I'm going to go opposite of that. I'm going to say, hey, my favorite snack, beef jerky. Absolutely. <laughs> beef jerky. Perfect. I love it. I love it. Uh, what is one word? If you could only use one word to describe your herd, what would it be? Large. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say um, docile. Absolutely docile. Uh, dream ranch location. Oh, gosh. Ooh, we've talked about we this. We have. Wyoming? Yes. <laughs> she it. So, but only in the summer months. Yeah. We want to be up there in the winter. <laughs> yes. You're going to summer in Wyoming and winter in Oklahoma, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> yes. uh, fa- you can only pick one. Favorite livestock website. Oh. Arrowhead. Arrowhead Cattle Company. Use it weekly. As a wall. Yep. <laughs> I'll agree with that one. Yep. Okay. Powered by Hired Hand, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite livestock event? One showcase. Yeah. Yep. Tiff, last year was Tiff's first. You yes. get to go. Bull Alley. Yep. What, what was your, was Bull Alley your favorite part? Mm-hmm. When they turn oh. all the lights off and get the music and the spotlights going? Get everybody excited. Yeah. That, that was her. Yes. That was her first ever event. Was Bull Alley of last year. It She's never. Ever it never worked out. We never made it anywhere together. He was always going, and I was getting stuck behind because I had something else to do. And last year, I had just had a baby. He was barely a couple months old, and it was finally the opportunity. And I'm like, let's go, let's do it. So it was really cool. Well, and they moved it to El Reno, which is an hour from us. Yeah. So it, mm-hmm. it worked out. And so are, is your son with you again uh, for this year's Horn Showcase? So my mom is in town. Okay. So we are going to Bull Alley. We're not going to make the sale, but we're going to go to the reception, Bull Alley, and then we're going to stay for the Kevin Fowler concert. Okay. Yeah. So a little date night then. That's nice. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. Um, all right. Well, I'm really curious to hear your different answers for this one. So ideal herd size. <laughs> First. <laughs> 10 mama cows and a bull. And then once they have calves, we need to figure it out. By the time the calves are a year old, they need to go. And then if we keep some of those, maybe the mama needs to go if we keep her baby. (laughs) I feel like you need an asterisk by your answer to say cow, not pear, right? Yes. (laughs) Yes. She's not, she's not that far off. You know, I would say, I'd say 15 mom, 15 pears. Let me say that 15 pears. Um, and then I like to keep, you know, seven breeding age heifers and then five to seven weaning age heifers. And then always, you know, I was taught, Kent would tell you, always keep a couple bull calves in the bullpen just to, to see what's going on. He interprets a couple by like five or six, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> handful. It's more of a handful, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Instagram or Facebook? Facebook. Facebook. Um, one ranch you haven't gotten to visit yet that you really want to. Oh gosh. I would love, <clears throat> man, that's so I, I couldn't even tell you the name of it. I have one in mind. I remember seeing it online. It was beautiful. They had, um, a drone go over it and it was just gorgeous. And I couldn't even tell you, you know, I, I'll say this. Um, I would love to get down and see John Helms place. That's, that would be mine. John. Yep. That would be my pick. Perfect. Um, how many, how much time do you spend looking at Longhorn websites in a week? Do you think <laughs> you go first. Ten, 10 minutes, <laughs> so, yeah, I would say two or three hours, probably a week. Yeah. Is she looking at your own to see what you bought or what you didn't sell? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so usually it starts with somebody posting a picture of a cow on one of the social media pages. Mm-hmm. And if, if they have a link, there it starts. <laughs> it doesn't end until I go to bed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Kayla, I feel like these next two are for you then. Um, so can you tell us the last three Longhorns or Longhorn sites in your search history? Uh, well, Harold's would be number one. I can promise. Um, <laughs> Arrowhead Cattle Company is probably number two. And then um, actually I was looking at uh, John Helms website just the other day. So uh, it'd be 
be those three probably. Perfect. And then I feel like we kind of already talked about this, but your go-to social media for finding and promoting your Longhorns, I'm guessing that's Facebook? Yep, it sure is. Yep. Well, what haven't I asked the both of you that you want to make sure you share while we're, while we're visiting here? Oh, man. Um, you know, I would say one of the things that obviously we enjoy the the breed and, and we enjoy the industry and, and the people in there are just spectacular. That's part of the reason why everything is so great um, and we enjoy it so much. Um, one, the, the people definitely make it. Oh yeah. Even, I mean, One, Longhorn are great, but man, and the people with it, it's just they're, good down to earth, hearty people. They are. And, and, you know, I will, I will say this in the very beginning, I was so scared to talk to or confront and, and try to meet any of these people. I mean, you walk, you go to the Horn Showcase and Bob Loomis is sitting there just hanging out and you're like, Oh my gosh, it's Bob <laughs> talk to Bob. Yeah. Like he's going to talk to you. Uh, Dale Hunt, same thing. You're like, that, that's Dale Hunt. You know, like, they're celebrities to yeah, us. They are. Like they untouchable. are. And, and, then, and they sit down next to you and it's like a conversation and they're just normal, normal. people that want to help you and teach you as much as they possibly can. Mm-hmm. We've said it a thousand times. I'll say it again. Kent and Sandy are just some of the most kind people who want to help. And um, But I would say that, that that's something that's really important to us. The other thing is probably the very, you know, probably the very best thing for us at our ranch is when someone calls us or reaches out to us and wants to come out and see the cows. That is, that means they have some sort of invested interest in the same thing that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, With us being really near Oklahoma state, we have had a handful of um, students who are art students of some kind come out and want to take photographs or um, a lot of them will take, will take stills so they can, then do some sort of paint. That's really neat that they want to come out. They've, they've seen a cow on our website or, or on Facebook or whatever. And they say, Hey, I want to come out and I want to photograph this cow. That, you know, that's something that is, is you can't put money on that. Right. That's just neat to go out there and, and meet this student who's 19 years old. And is probably from another part of the country that has probably never seen a longhorn in real life and they want to come out and photograph it and they're going to do drawings. And we've got a handful of paintings up in the yeah. office right now from them. Like it is, is so that's, that is really neat. You can't put, you can't put value on that. Well, thank you both so much for taking the time to be on the podcast today. I feel like we definitely learned a lot about your program and about some of the, the animals that folks maybe are uh, going to go check out and, and Google now. So yeah, you bet. Thank you for having <laughs> me. We appreciate the opportunity.